Hello. Just before we start this video, I need to give you a little bit of background information. We're about to explore the Stanage Railway Tunnels. These tunnels here. Okay, this is the arrangement. You've got two disused railway tunnels here, okay? Over here, and I'm going to show you now. You've got a double bore, currently live railway track, okay? So that's the later tunnel, all right? We're going to explore those two disused tunnels. We're not going to go near that. There's trains going through it. We won't be going near that. This is just an old building here that used to be part of the old station, okay? Nothing in here at all. Nothing really to show you in here, but it was part of the old Diggle station. So, you see the arrangement? Two disused tunnels, okay? A live tunnel over there with trains going through. We won't be going near that. Below me, where I'm stood now, is a canal tunnel, okay? You can't see that at the moment. I'll show you the entrance to that in a minute. So, we're a little bit further along now from the entrance to those disused railway tunnels and that is the entrance to the canal tunnel. It's, we're a bit further this way, all right? Three and a half miles long of deep, dark water. Absolutely terrifying. And it's at a lower level than the, uh, the railway tunnels, as will become apparent. Commenced in about 1794 and the first boats were going through in 1811, so it took about 16, 17 years to build. All right, so if you'll permit me, I'm just going to explain a few more things um, and then we'll crack on with the explore. Okay, so there's a drawing of the arrangement that we're looking at that I've just basically shown you. Working from the left and not in chronological order, that first tunnel on the left is the double bore railway tunnel that was com commenced in 1890 and finished in 1894. So in the middle and at the lowest level, you'll see the canal tunnel. Work commenced on that in 1794 and finished in 1811. Above the canal tunnel, you'll see a ventilation shaft. Now they stretch right up above through the rock and up to the hillside above the Pennine Hills. And some of those shafts are up to 500 feet deep and a little bit more, to be honest with you. Now those shafts were sunk also to enable to lower men down and do the dig for the canal tunnel as well. So not only did they start at both ends of the, the hillside, both ends of the tunnel, they sunk shafts through the hillside and worked in the middle as well. Now the next tunnel along from the canal tunnel is the first railway tunnel. That's called the Nicholson Tunnel. It's called that after the engineer that built it. It was the first of the railway tunnels to be built. Work commenced in 1843 and it was finished in 1865. And finally, the final tunnel on the right, that is the Nelson Tunnel, named after Thomas Nelson, the contractor who built it. Work commenced in 1865 and finished in 1890. And then those two tunnels served as um, up and down tunnels. Now looking at the picture from the middle where it says sh ventilation shaft, Looking to the right, you'll see it says airway. And the airway is between the canal tunnel, the first railway tunnel, and the second railway tunnel. Those airways are little tunnels. They call them adits, A-D-I-T, adits. Um, and we can walk between the two disused railway tunnels, and we can walk between the, rail the railway tunnel and the canal tunnel. So we can look at both railway tunnels, and we can take a glimpse at the canal tunnel. And this is what you'll see us doing. So I just needed to explain all that to you so you know exactly what's going on when we walk down the railway tunnel but then take a side view at the canal and also we get to see those shafts. Let's crack on with the uh, explore. Hello, welcome back to another video. We're about to do the mother of all explores. We've done some train tunnels before but this has got to be the biggest railway tunnel I have ever done in my life. 
You may, you may have heard of it, it's called Standage Tunnels and we're up in Saddleworth in Diggle, uh, just in West Yorkshire. The team today is, we've got All Action Hero Connor here and we've got Paul with us and Paul was the guy, that the chap that went and got us a shot of the uh, one of the ventilation shafts for these tunnels. With um, the knees knocking away. With the knobbly knees up the uh, rickety <laughs> ladder. So we've uh, managed to get into one of the old disused tunnels, um, not locked up at all. Uh, and all we're going to do is walk through, take photographs, leave footprints and try and get you some good footage. Uh, because this is a really, really interesting place to explore. In fact, I'm on a bit of an, an adrenaline rush at the minute. It's that good. So. The road ahead is extremely long and extremely dark. This tunnel is three and a half miles long, so it's going to be a bit of a long day today. But uh, let's go and see what we can find. Now, for me, this is a bit of a a bit of an ambition to be honest with you, because back in 1984, when I was about 17 years old, we used to have the occasional drink up at the, uh, I think the Diggle Hotel, I think it's all the junction or something, just up at the side here. And we'd come out and we'd walk down the embankment and we'd have a look at the Stanage tunnels and we'd have about, you know, a walk in a couple of, uh, couple of yards and go, yeah, we'll have to come back here one day and we'll explore it. That was 1984 and I've never been back since. And it's now 2018, I'm a lot older, I'm a bit more creaky, but finally, today, hopefully, I get to walk through this thing. So we're currently in the Nicholson Tunnel. Okay, so we're off on the way, um, journey begins. Not quite sure how long it's gonna take us to walk through this monster of a tunnel, but uh, like I say, we have to do it. We have to get all the way through, and then it's gonna be a really fast stomp back um, so we're going to go through this little adit now, this little side tunnel, and we're going to show you the canal. Okay, so you can see that there's a nice little arch there. That's probably been put in later. Uh, I think that that's probably a strengthening arch. Uh, you can also see over there, you see the, the greyness of the rock there. Well, that's the spray crete, and that is what they spray on the rock to uh, strengthen it. There's a stainless steel mesh under there, apparently, and it's designed to stabilize the rock. But can you imagine being down here in 1800, 1795, 96? and just chipping away at the bare rock, being probably Connor's age, 20 odd years old, um, I'm chipping away at the bare rock. And you can see that there's a, obviously built with no towpath. They considered a towpath, but decided it was gonna to be too expensive. So it was built just as you see here now. So we're going to head now back into the uh, railway tunnels, just this way, as you can see. You see this tunnel here? This tunnel runs, this little side tunnel runs underneath the first railway tunnel to the, and that goes through to the second railway tunnel and they brought the spoil through there um, to the canal barges and basically the first tunnel was a working railway tunnel. The first tunnel was basically a working railway tunnel and so when they built the second tunnel they had to bring it underneath the first tunnel to the canal tunnel down there and take the spoil out on the barges. And that goes back to the railway tunnels. But you see what I mean when I said it's an entire infrastructure down here. There's not just one long simple tunnel, it's the side tunnels, it's the canal tunnel, and in a bit we'll get a view of the live railway line, but obviously we're not going near there. 
Um, this is another one of the sort of side tunnel addits. Um, obviously this one is disused, um, probably goes to nowhere down there. Um, but you can see the rock. So I'm not sure what this rock is. Obviously it's uh, kind of layered, um, but this is what they were obviously blasting through and digging through. It seems pretty soft to be honest with you. It seems quite flaky. So maybe that was the easy stuff that they had to get through. I know they had to uh, tunnel down through sandstone as well. That's it. There you go, look. Right, so train there. So this is a good example. This is the side tunnels that I'm talking about. So behind me, oh, let's go the other way. So behind me, you can see the entrance there to the main railway tunnel. But we've got these side tunnels. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to walk through there uh, with my torch and show you, and that goes through to the other railway tunnel. Okay, so we'll go through there and then you'll know what I'm talking about. So you can hear that water and that was the problem while they were building the, these tunnels. The amount of water that ingresses from the, uh, the Pennine Hills above and you can just hear, unbelievable. And this is the problem that they had with floods and having to pump the water out of these tunnels. So we're currently in one of the disused railway tunnels. This is what they call the Nicholson, Nicholson Tunnel. And I think it's called that after the one of the chief engineers that built it. This tunnel was built in 1845, between 1845 and 1848. And this was the first of the railway tunnels. Obviously the canal tunnel had already, already been built. And when they were building this first railway tunnel, the amount of damage they did to the canal tunnel was unbelievable. There was, there was collapses and all sorts of stuff because of course, in this first railway tunnel, they were using dynamite and it did substantial damage to the canal tunnel. 
apparently in the canal tunnel some of the workmanship wasn't the best anyway i know we tend to think of um the workmanship back in the day back all that time ago it was being absolutely pristine well some of it was a little bit questionable in the canal tunnel and there's been all sorts of uh, extra work done in there um, over the years where they've put brick arches up and had to um, do all sorts of strengthening work but this building this tunnel the Nicholson tunnel played absolute, absolute havoc with the canal tunnel Okay, so well, I'm actually stood on top of the canal. This is like a little bridge over the canal. Behind me, behind that wooden thing there, is the live railway track. But above me is one of the shafts that go up to the hillside above. I'll just show you. So, as you saw in one of my videos, we uh, filmed over the top and looked down one of those shafts and it was absolutely terrifying and now we stood down underneath one. You can see there's a grate there, um, but this is the first shaft that we've come across in from Diggle. Uh, I'll have to look up what that shaft is called because there's numerous shafts along the route of the tunnel. What's down here, Connor? What? The tea room. I'll take it down with the ground, won't So when this was uh, obviously a working railway, there were some plate layers, they call them plate layers, I think that's maintenance guys in the tunnels, that were based in here all the time, worked in here all the time, and this is the little hut where they hung out. And the best thing about this place is, obviously there's a, a connection through to the other, other uh, railway tunnel through there, but the best thing ever is they have a little fireplace. Oh yeah, yeah, got in it. So that must be where the smoke used to go, you know, from the, the fire. Yeah. Mm. 
pass one. Well. See how this part of the canal is bricklined and earlier when I showed you it wasn't bricklined at all and I just wonder if this was a damaged section from when they dug the uh, first railway tunnel and this is repair work, not quite sure. Look at that trace of soot on the roof there, absolutely black where uh, steam trains have hit it. So when this was just the only railway tunnel Obviously it was one way either way and what they did was they had um, a pilot locomotive and it either went one way or the other, a uh, single track down here and obviously when they built the second tunnel just to my left at the moment, obviously they could run trains both ways but that's the way they did it, they had a pilot locomotive back in the very, very early days that just took either the carriages or the freight one way and then the other way. So a good way of solving it really so there weren't any crashes in the tunnel. The canal tunnel is, is the, the pioneer of all this. The canal tunnel was started in 1794 and it was finished in 1811. So it took 16, 17 years to build. And the story is incredible to be honest with you. Benjamin Outram, the, um, one of the, the original engineers, uh, when they were building the canal tunnel, what he did was he had limited knowledge of uh, the, the rock uh, that was around here and he seriously underestimated the rock that they were going to dig through. He thought it was millstone grit, which he thought was quite workable. Turns out that when they got down into a, down one of the shafts and they started to work at the face, they hit a, a fault in the rock and they hit sandstone and that slowed the progress massively. So although we're walking through the railway tunnel, it's the canal tunnel that is the pioneer of all this, like I've already said. So you can see the rock there that they've had to cut through. Don't know what that rock is, but uh, looks different than before. Before it looked more in layers, but that looks more solid, that one. I wonder if that's the sandstone they encountered. And just one second. Absolutely, and there's no trains going through, and there's no water running absolutely silent in here, incredibly silent. A lot of the uh, these little side tunnels are used for uh, maintenance purposes for the railway as you'd expect and also they're also a uh, sort of a evacuation so if you're on a boat trip because they do boat trips from Marsden and you need evacuating off the boat or some emergency they can stop at these side tunnels and evacuate you and you can also get uh, you can actually drive an ambulance down here uh, that's what they use them for for maintenance for emergencies or if the train broke down they could just evacuate the people into the side tunnels get an ambulance down here and drive them out basically
why don't you just call it? It's just right. Paul. Right, we're still, we'll do it again, right? Oh, Paul Bucks. Look at that. All that rock that's fallen. This is the problem they had. Rock falls in the tunnel. Uh, I almost don't want to go through there, but uh, I'm tempted to just go and take a look. Oh, isn't it? Because this is all fresh. Yeah. Looking. This looks like a bit of a fresh rock fall. But that is a. Uh, looks like it's fallen from the ceiling, doesn't it? Because it's fallen from there. And it's flat. I wonder if this rock is in layers, and there's the layers there on the floor. And that goes through again down there to the canal tunnel down there where the torch is shining. It's strange, isn't it? Because although it's a modern railway tunnel and people fly through here on trains using mobile phones and, and texting people, you just come literally a couple of feet away from it and you walk through and we're sort of back in 1800, uh, 1794, 1800 or the mid 1800s when this, this place was built. And this where we are now, this sort of semi-collapsed adit, this linking tunnel, really gives an impression of the way it would have been down here, working the rock, chipping away at it. The rock falls, can you imagine? Can you imagine when they dynamited it, what it was like? Absolutely incredible. Um, and the deaths and the lives and, you know, the industrial accidents that would have happened, particularly in the canal tunnel when it was being built 1790 odd, 1794, 95, 96. Unbelievable. And this place sort of just takes you a little bit back to them, them working rock faces that they had to hack away at by hand and by candlelight. It's all right with us with our electric lights, isn't it? But look at this, incredible. The canal. Is it the canal? Yeah. Is it worth a picture or not? It is actually, mm. it's a picture. Let me go down like that. Yeah, you go. Come on, no fair Connor. No fair Connor. <laughs> okay, so if you can't beat them, join them. I'm going to take a look and see what they can see down there at the canal. Yeah, Careful. <clears throat> and again, you can see that it's brick line there, there's a bit of an arch there, I don't know if you can see it. Um, but you've got raw rock there as well, I'll just zoom in for you. So it looks like the rock on that side is raw, it's not been spray created. And obviously certainly raw there, look at that. Absolutely incredible. And can you imagine having to bring the stone down here? That had to line these tunnels on horses and donkeys and things. Absolute testament to the men, women and children that work down here. And it would have been men, women and children. Um, incredible, honestly, absolutely incredible place. We have another shaft area here. We're going in, Paul. So this is another ventilation shaft. I have a feeling this is the monster that is the Redbrook shaft. Um, you can hear the water there. Uh, this one I've stood above, it's not the one that was on the video, I've stood above this one, it's going to be perhaps in another video. But uh, if this is Redbrook, this is the highest, the tallest of the shafts. I think this is 512 feet tall. Uh, obviously we're at the bottom, so we're looking up 512 feet. Let's go and take a look. Oh my God. So there, ahead of us, is the railway tunnel. Jesus wept. Up there, up there, Paul. Oh my God. That is incredible. That, my friends, is Redbrook. 512 feet deep and you can see the water coming down 512 feet uh, to the surface um, but you can see the bare rock this is absolutely incredible Oh, 
Yeah. Bloody hell. All right. Hang on that one, I'll pick it up. Oh, men at work. Now, that could be either very old or not very old. Difficult to say. So you can see the problem they have with water ingress into the tunnels. I'm stood underneath here now and it's almost like it's raining. To be honest, I'm a little bit nervous and I'm glad I've got the hard hat because above me, like I say, 500 foot. What an incredible, incredible place. This has got to be the most amazing place I've ever been to in my entire life. Just walking over the canal tunnel. Oh my god. Oh. Right, we have to go and see that. Oh my god. Look like a werewolf. Oh! Red rock number two, I think. That is scary. Ah, oh, I'm getting wet through. So we've been walking now for what feels like hours. I mean, we really have been here, but we've been looking at a lot of the features, you know, the shafts and things like that. But uh, just, we think we can smell sort of fresh air now. I uh, think we can smell fresh air. think we're getting near the end, not sure. But this has just gone. Three and a half mile doesn't sound a lot when you're on a nice summer day walk, but in the blackness of this tunnel, it's just gone on and on and on. And to be honest with you, I'm just itching to get to the end now. I really am just itching to get to the end. Um, <laughs> fascinating place. Probably never come back, but uh, I would come back, but I, I won't be coming back in a hurry. But uh, like I say, you know when you're thinking it's near the end and you walk on and on and on and it's not the end. And you can see behind me just absolute blackness. So hopefully, and the, the thing about it is as well, when we get to the end, I think it's gone dark outside. So oh, another shaft. So this is probably one of the ones near the end now. Yeah. You can see there where part of the grid has fallen. You can see it over there. Uh, I'm not going to stick the camera up there, but well, that's one of the shafts because the camera's going to get wet through. And I put the GoPro up one before. Uh, but you can see the amount of water that comes through. Absolutely incredible. You see the arch there? That possibly we think goes over the canal. The canal is just underneath all that debris there. So this is another shaft, uh, not sure which one this is now, look at that, and the shaft goes up there obviously, and we can't go in there because it's not good, a uh, bit of a brick lining, and then stone, possibly the brick was later, and then raw rock up there.
But look how, you know why it's so deep there? I think it's the sump for all of the, uh, we talk about sumps for the machines. Yeah. They draw out the water. That's it. We've done it at the end. And guess what? You can't tell we're at the end because outside it's gone dark. We've been in the tunnel that long. Right, so that was unbelievable. I'm knackered of you. Yeah, I'm hungry as well. He's Shattered. sort of weary. Walking is just through like that was just unbelievable. Completely weary. I feel like we've been in here for hours, don't we? We're going to walk back now. Um, if we find anything interesting on the way back, we'll let you, we'll show it to you, but we're gonna get a spurt on and get out of this place. So when I was walking through those tunnels, all the time I was just filled with admiration and horror. Admiration for the men, women and children that dug those shafts and that tunnel, that initial canal tunnel, and obviously later the railway tunnels but more so the canal tunnel, because I think it was so long ago and it was the first, that horrifies me the most. And like I say, horrified at the conditions that they had to work in. Those shafts, we lit them from down below, but they would have worked in absolute darkness by candlelight with hand tools. And you saw the water that were pouring in and they would have worked year round and it would have been freezing cold horrendous conditions so like I say nothing but admiration and nothing but horror for the conditions they had to work in and obviously the deaths that more than likely occurred so if you enjoy the video and I hope you did please don't thank me because I am merely standing on the shoulders of giants